Hello, Rory here from Polyhedron Collider, and I'm here at the NEC Birmingham, just ahead of the UK Games Expo 2024, because I've just been very lucky, and I've just sat down and played Lord of the Rings Duel for Middle Earth. Duel for Middle Earth isn't just a Lord of the Rings slap-on theme for Seven Wonders Duel. There's a few other things that are going on that are quite different here. The first and probably the most noticeable thing is the military track. It's not there. It's no longer abstracted as a back and forth march up and down the board. Instead, every time you play a red military card, you'll be applying troops, the number increasing as the ages progress, to a central board. You'll get a choice to apply them to one of two cities, of which there are several in total. And as soon as you have area, as soon as you have majority in all seven cities, you instantly win the game with a military victory. The other ways you can win the game similar to the Seven Wonders Duel, is by the science cards. This time, these are peoples of Middle-earth. If you manage to collect and unite the peoples of Middle-earth, you, of course, win the game instantly. But another thing here, there's no, more, there's no more progress tokens. Now, when you get three different types, you have access to the tokens, those abilities of those races, whether they be dwarf, hobbits, wizards, ents. You get to look at those tokens, pick one, and they give you either an ongoing special bonus as they do or gives you a one-off really super powerful ability all of which are very cool and give you a reason to do these things um, you can't see what's available at the beginning of the game as you would do in seven wonders jewel here you have to take a bit of a blind punt but they are really really cool powers the other noticeable change is the race element of the game here frodo and sam are trying to destroy the ring you're going from the shire all the way to mount doom to get get rid of the ring. This is done by playing blue cards now, which have a ring symbol. So every time you play a ring symbol card, you progress along this track. At certain points, you'll unlock key bonuses like gain extra money, put troops on the board, or even take another turn. However, you're of course being chased by the ring wraiths. The wonder cards are also missing from this. These are being replaced by landmark tiles. They work similar. You have to build, have a lot of resources, but instead they give you a slightly different bonus. These allow you to put towers onto the central board, the map of Middle-earth. These towers act as a permanent presence there that troops can't tear down. Normally, opposing troops can't share a space. But once a tower has been built, and you can only have one tower per region, it's there permanently and adds to your military might. Probably my favourite thing about Duel for Middle-earth is how it ends. It ends dynamically. It ends quickly. Once that final card is taken, there's no getting a notepad. There's no finding a sharp pencil or pen. The game just ends. You look at that map of Middle Earth, who has the greatest presence, that person is declared the winner. It means it gives you a focus for the entire game. Yes, you can try and race to get to Mount Doom or to catch the Hobbits. Yes, you can try and unite, unite the Fellowship or unite the peoples of Middle Earth. But really, this is about controlling Middle Earth. It's about getting those troops on the board, about building those towers. Duel for Middle Earth, feels very different. It plays very different, but it builds on those core mechanics. There's still a pyramid of cards. It's still all there. I'm still getting resources. I'm still collecting my green cards. I'm still trying to get an even spread, but it all feels very different. In fact, I'm being totally honest, this is a better game than Seven Wonders Duel. It's more exciting. And I'm not a huge Lord of the Rings fan. But the theme feels better. It feels more integrated to more of the game. That central map really changes how the military conflict works. It makes more sense. It's a lot of fun. If you get a chance to play this during the UK Games Expo, then do make sure you try and get over to the Asmodee stand. They've got one prototype all weekend, and it's sign-ups only. If not, you're going to have to wait for its general release in October. I've been Rory Summers. This has been Polyhedron Collider. You know the routine, like, subscribe. If you've got any questions or comments, leave them in the doobly-doo and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Till then, thank you. Bye-bye.